What are we talking about, bro? What the f are we? What, yo, what the f are we even talking about, bro? You don't even do nothing. You disrespectful, bro. I changed your mother life. Back in 2015, Lil Yachty burst onto the scene with his viral hit One Night. However, One Night is also the same amount of time that it just took him to end Caribou's career. A former artist of his, who many labeled Yachty's personal industry plant, the two at least seemed to have a great relationship, until everything changed on the night of August 22nd, when leaked information from a Red Lobster employee basically led to Caribou put on blast in front of the eyes of millions. What the f are we talking about? You ain't never, you ain't never wrote no, no, a song in your life. That's why ain't no music came out since you've been left. Cause you ain't got no music. Cause you can't rap. As you're about to see in the full clip, Yachty did not hold back at all. But what exactly made him so angry? Along with claiming that his Concrete Boys record label is now $900,000 in debt due to her failure, this is how Lil Yachty ended Caribou's career in one night. Although she first signed to Lil Yachty's Concrete Boys record label and collective last year, the truth is, prior to rapping, Caribou actually worked as Yachty's assistant since 2022. And we just had like mutual friends and I met him and then we started kicking it. We got really close like after that, like I became his assistant and we got really close during that. Knowing from Atlanta, just like Yachty, while it's unknown what her specific duties were as his personal assistant, clearly though she did not do a good job because only a few months later she was fired. However, getting fired was exactly what Caribou needed to launch her music career. And he fired me. Now he like, you know, we're super close. He's funny as f and he's a good person. Like he actually cares. Like he'll he'll have your back if you need it. It's like, he been real helpful. Like every day on this tour, he'll, be, he'll dead eyes like be like, yo, you okay? You okay today? I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Cause I be tripping. After getting fired by Lil Yachty, Caribou decided to try her own hand at rapping and release her debut single, Money Counter, in October of 2022. Drawing eyes in the Atlanta scene, including those of her former boss, as she claims after hearing her first single, Yachty reached back out and offered to sign her to his label. Today, it feels like every popular rapper has their own record label, and Lil Yachty is no exception. Known as the Concrete Boys and featuring the three other rappers, Draft Day, Camo, and DC2 Trill, following the release of her debut single, Caribou would sign to Yachty and become the first ever Concrete Girl. She then dropped her second successful single, Box the 40, and the future was looking extremely bright for Caribou, trying to establish herself as the next female star. However, there was just one major problem. A problem that, despite being overlooked for so long, has finally come back to haunt her. Ever since one of her first interviews with Montreality, it's been clear that Caribou has never wanted to be a rapper. As she explains her true intention from the start. I wanted to be an actress. Still do. Probably will. After, like, I rap a little. Probably just get on baddies. Then get booked for, it's for a movie. What do you guys think? Sounds realistic, honestly. I don't know one baddies member that got booked for like a a A-list movie yet. Just saying. I'm I'm also the first. I'm the first to to do a lot. Like I'm the first to be a concrete girl. To if someone say yeah, we got an A-list movie for you, you'll just stop your music career. Yeah. Damn. I literally am only rapping because I saw Boat doing a movie when I was his assistant, and I was like, ooh, that, that's the day I was like, I want to be a rapper, cause like you could just be an actor from being a rapper if you fly enough. At rapping. You think that's how that works? That's how Boat did it. You think he just just he just a rapper, and then they just put him in a movie. You think it's that simple, huh? Yeah, so I'm finna do the same. Shit, you got a lot to learn, buddy. No, you got a lot to learn. Y'all finna see. You can just tell they didn't f with Caribou. One fan comments looking back, and honestly, I don't blame them. You can just see how bad her attitude is in this interview. Nice place. You got. You can back up while I'm talking to Cole. You got a nice place going on. You had a nice little festival going on, and stuff like that. And Cole, you were that. But Kira, well, I'm trying to say though, like I don't, I don't think know he likes you that much because every time we're in Chicago, he's never even here, so he might not. I love you, Cole. Shout out Lyrical Lemonade. Combined with her egotistical behavior always coming off as better than her own label mates, something Lil Yachty would stress heavily during his viral rant. But again, as Caribou said herself, from the beginning her goal has always been to be an actor. And she only started rapping as a segue to help her get there. That's when I really was like, no, nah, I want to be a rapper. Cause I was like, it can help me get to be an actress. Until that day though, many fans had been enjoying Caribou's music. She was the only member I cared about in Concrete Boys. Finishing the year of 2023 out strong with a few more singles such as her biggest solo track so far, Running Late, as well as her standout verse during the Concrete Boys on the Radar freestyle. Racking up millions of views across social media, going viral for all the right reasons as the internet was caught off guard by her fire verse. However though, did she actually write it? 
despite the fact that all of her music, including this freestyle, does state it was written by Caribou. According to Lil Yachty's recent Instagram Live breakdown, though, where he claims to finally expose the truth about his former artist, Yachty revealed that there's actually a deeper reason why fans enjoyed her music. What are we talking about, bro? What the f are we talking about, bro? I wrote that f***ing verse when we went on On The Radar. I put you last on purpose, so everyone would say, who the f*** is that girl? I slowed the beat down. I put 808 specifically on your verse, so when it got to your part and the beat dropped, everyone would be like, oh, the, the girl is the craziest one. I wrote that verse the night before we even went to On The Radar, on my phone. Bro, I typed, I, I, I got the voice, I got the f***ing reference. What the f*** are we talking about? You ain't never, you ain't never wrote no, no, a song in your life. That's why ain't no music came out since you've been left. Cause you ain't got no music. Cause you can't rap. Listening back, it's pretty clear that Yachty had been writing Caribou's verses and flows this entire time. Yachty killed this. One fan recently commented on Caribou's freestyle. Yachty in the back like, yeah, I killed this with his hand over his mouth and all. As an artist who has written major hits in the past, such as City Girl's triple platinum hit Act Up, as well as multiple tracks for Drake on her loss, Lil Yachty writing for Caribou is honestly not surprising at all. I think her loss made a lot of people like look at me and be like, wait a second, huh, there must be something we don't see. Mm. But although Caribou has continued to deny these ghostwriting claims against her, despite Yachty posting undeniable evidence that we're about to see, while we'll also see in a second exactly what led to their messy split, entering 2024 though, things seem to be going great between the two, and between Concrete Boys as a whole. Concrete is us. It's us. It's, it's to stay solid. This is what it means to me, you know what I'm saying? Stay solid, uh, be true to yourself, I think of just solid family, five rappers. <laughs> Is that not it? We solid, we family. Yeah, five rappers. I mean, and that's we five us. rappers. That's us, but like. But I pretty like, much ate better than any explanation. No cap. She said enough. <laughs> It now turns out Lil Yachty's concrete crew was not as solid as they had thought. But prior to everything crashing down in a single night, to keep their momentum rolling to start the year, Concrete Boys released their debut compilation album It's Us Volume 1 in April of 2024. As Pitchfork describes it, a quote, launch pad for Caribou, the only one of the bunch who will leave you wanting to hear a solo mixtape, Caribou was the obvious standout of his debut project. The group then embarked on their first ever tour together in June, however only a month later in July, after Caribou Caribou started suspiciously not appearing at their final shows, fans began speculating something was up behind the scenes. And before we knew it, everything was changed forever. But you know what else though that can change forever with just a simple click of a button? Protecting you and your entire household's online safety in a matter of seconds. All thanks to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. The moment you connect to Surfshark VPN, all of your online activity is encrypted, meaning that it is protected from dangerous scammers and hackers all over the internet, thus guaranteeing the safety of your important private information. With over 3,200 servers to connect to in over 100 different locations, VPNs such as Surfshark also allow you to change your online location and unlock restricted content, such as letting you watch shows on Netflix that may not have been previously available in your country. But one of my personal favorite benefits of Surfshark, though, is their alert feature, which, as you can see here, immediately alerts and notifies you the second that your email, ID, credit card, or other personal data is leaked online, as well as also showing you how many times your passwords have been breached, which is perfect for someone like me who is always entering passwords on different websites. At less than the price of your daily coffee, for only $2.09 a month you can try all of the great benefits of Surfshark out for yourself. Plus, if you scan my QR code on screen or enter the promo code 1111 at checkout, you will also receive an additional 4 months totally free. Not to mention there's a 30 day money back guarantee, so it's really no risk if you decide you don't like it. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I would have been out of fear if I had a solid team, Caribou subliminally tweeted back in March. Not only was this her first time publicly dissing Lil Yachty and her team, but this clearly showed fans there were internal issues within the group. Then, a few months later, fans speculated serious drama, as Caribou was again consistently the only group member missing from their concerts, such as their Broccoli City performance here where you see everyone else take the stage but Caribou. Leading to then, two days later on July 29th, Lil Yachty officially confirming the speculation. I'm gonna say this shit one time, right? We uh, have split ways with care as far as this concrete shit. Um, I don't have nothing 
I have nothing to say, nothing bad to say, nothing negative to say um, about Kara. I wish her um, the best. I, I I would never, I'm never gonna speak on it again. So that's it. Lil Yachty confirmed the Concrete Boy split from Caribou, and despite claiming that he would never speak on the situation again, little did he know that only 24 days later, his one Instagram live would basically destroy Caribou's career. But while some fans were initially sad about the two's departure, others questioned if it was all just promo. Pretty sure it's a stunt for album promo, where is Caribou, one fan theorized. However, in addition to them noticing that not only had Caribou unfollowed the other members of Concrete Boys, including Lil Yachty, fans also pointed out that Caribou was no longer included in the group's Instagram bio, leading us to believe this was not promo. Y'all be letting this internet guide y'all, Yachty tweeted in regards to the rumors. In real life, it is different, I'm telling you. But besides a few more subliminal tweets from Caribou herself in July, such as, I really irritate myself when I let people who not even thinking about me and don't give a f about me hurt my feelings. As August rolled around though, the situation died down and appeared to have passed over. But that didn't last long, as only 24 days later, Lil Yachty found himself in yet another controversy. Controversy that would not only cost him his relationship with one of his childhood best friends, but also seemed to put a nail in the career of his former artist, Caribou, as it's going to be extremely tough to recover from what went down. I don't say too much because I know it's gonna unfold on its own, Caribou tweeted on August 21st, and then, just one day later, it did. August 22nd, 2024, the day that changed everything. The flame was first ignited thanks to this viral post from a random account on Twitter, racking up over 15 million views. With the caption reading, Lil Yachty disrespecting his friend in front of Key Glock, this two minute, 20 second video clip is from Lil Yachty's A Safe Place podcast, which he co-hosts with his friend Mitch, or at least used to co-host. Unfortunately, the entire podcast episode is copyrighted, so I can't play you guys the clip. But to sum it up, after the topic of working normal jobs prior to getting rich came up, Yachty basically shit on his homie Mitch right in front of Key Glock and his viewers, questioning where Mitch would be if he didn't have a savior friend like Yachty, and selfishly emphasizing his role in Mitch's life and career. Imagine if you didn't have a friend who was super successful, Yachty awkwardly boasts in the clip, to help you get on your feet. If I wasn't in your life, where would you be? Rightfully so, fans were disappointed in Yachty's behavior towards his good friend and co-host. Mitch, Lil Yachty is not your homie. There's a time and place to have these conversations, but not on a podcast in front of millions of people to dissect and observe. This is lame as f I ain't wanna do no motherfucking podcast, nigga. I'm a motherfucking rapper, nigga. Got millions of dollars. I don't need to talk to other rappers. What the f are we talking about? I did the podcast for Mitch. However, in addition to also calling out Mitch a few hours later during his infamous Instagram Live we're about to see, this was only the beginning. I see why Caribou left. One user responded to the viral podcast clip. The simple reply that would have otherwise went unnoticed actually then led to the final domino collapsing, all thanks to a worker at Red Lobster. She personally told me out of her mouth they kicked her out. This ex-account known as Moon responded, they are all messed up people and they were bullying her. Continuing on with more details, bro, she walked in my job at Red Lobster to order some cheddar biscuits, quite possibly the smartest move of Caribou's career so far, and I asked her why she left Concrete Boys, but she immediately corrected me and said I didn't leave, they kicked me out. Posting proof with this selfie the two took together in the restaurant, she seemed really hurt by this shit, to be honest, like they really did her dirty. And I believe it's because her name was the biggest behind Yachty, if we being real. But while some fans had questioned if this girl was telling the truth or just making this up for some internet clout, after Caribou quote tweeted herself from a day earlier saying this aged well, again about the truth unfolding on its own, it was clear that Caribou had actually made those claims to this Red Lobster employee, which as you can guess, pissed off her former label boss. LOL, Lil Yachty posted to his story, at Caribou, you crazy dude. But as more hate and accusations continued to pile onto Yachty's name, he had finally had enough. I swear to God, I ain't wanna do this, but F it, came this tweet at 8.22 p.m. Lil Yachty had reached his breaking point and was ready for war, which was exactly what followed that Thursday evening. I'm so sick and tired of helping people, bro. All I done ever did was help people. I'm gonna start with care, right? Cause right now I'm on some everybody type shit. All I ever did was help care, nigga care. If you wanna tell this shit, tell the whole story. Go ahead and tell people how you verbally abuse people. Alright? Don't get on here and make it seem like niggas kicked you out. Like niggas kicked you out cause uh bullying you? 
Bro, go ahead and tell people how you talk to people. How you tell my security guy, oh, you home, oh, you work for me, oh, uh, you're poor, and uh, we above you, and how you, you talk to people like they nothing. How you disrespect people. How you, how you go around treating people in your everyday life. Internally, we have withheld your actions since the beginning of me giving you this career. What are we talking about, bro? What the f are we, what, yo, what the f are we even talking about, bro? You don't even do nothing. You, just, what the f Yo, bro, it's so crazy to me, bro, because I fucking, I, I, I've given you a career, and time to time, you just disrespect me. I wrote every fucking verse you've done. I, I dressed you. I dressed all five of y'all niggas, bro. I put an outfit on everybody. I put eight carat earrings in everybody ear. I put three chains on all y'all neck. We bought a Cartier watch. I gave you that chrome Rolex. Bro, you the most dis you what you was watching tables. You was you was you was you was waiting. What are we talking about, nigga? I changed your motherfucking life. And you on here lying, talking about some we bully you? That shit got me fed up, bro. You got me up bro you disrespectful bro you talk to people crazy you tell people that they are nothing you tell people you're gonna spit on them you talk to my fucking label crazy you claim i was stealing money from you bro stealing money from you how nigga stealing money from you how bro you ain't made no money bro you nine hundred thousand dollars in a hole and i got every fucking receipt nigga nine hundred thousand dollars concrete in a hole I've been nothing but loving and caring and paid your bills and gave you money and, and, and took you around the world. And nobody would even know who the f caribou was if it wasn't for me. What are we talking about, bro? Kara, I have never bullied you. I let you live in my house for free. You lived in my house for free when you didn't have nowhere to live. I let you live in my house. It, sooner or later, it would have came out that you were a terrible person and you shit on people and you treat people like they nothing. And your career would have been done. Yeah? I mean, it's gone. It's, it, it's been done, nigga, because you're all right. You give somebody a career and then they start to think like they really start to think they that person. Despite previously stating he would never speak about it again, Lil Yachty broke his social media silence to reveal his side of the story. Combined with claiming that Caribou is spreading lies about him, while in the meantime his label Concrete Boys is 900k in debt because of her, also came the remarks about writing all of her lyrics. In addition to again being easy to tell just by listening, Yachty would even post proof to back up his claims, as he would then leak the reference track he made from his notes of Caribou's viral on the radar freestyle. Trust to knock off the dust. Why right would that sack under my arm for stacking up a must? Ain't no nigga that I trust to knock off the dust. Walk her that sack under my arm for stacking up a must. She was Yachty's assistant for years, and he just convinced her to start rapping a few months ago. Of course, he was writing her verses. One fan comments. However, while at this point there is really no denying Lil Yachty's ghostwriting assistance, that is exactly what Caribou's done. Put it on your kids, I ain't write these songs, Miles. She fired back in response a few hours later, circling her other top two songs. Stop the cap and leave me out of your internet shenanigans. Stop bullying me, big dog. I never said nothing, you letting random fans get in your head, man up. At least according to the song's details, Lil Yachty does not have writing credits on either Running Late or Where Your Daddy. But again, the lyrics and flow sound identical to something Yachty would write. Yachty spazzed on this, the top comment reads on Running Late, but yet, Caribou wasn't finished firing back, as she would then say this at her next performance in Chicago. Who ain't riding? Who ain't riding? Who ain't riding? What you say? My family right now, more than my music. Don't throw rocks and hide your hand, Lil Yachty responded on his story. I'll never forget this feeling, this chapter of my life, posted Caribou. I'll never forget who wasn't there for me. I can't even look at most people the same way. To know the truth and watch a grown man with 12 million followers overly lie on my name and publicly bully me for literally no reason at all. I never threw rocks and you have my number, you big grown bitch. Leave me alone, literally. She continues tagging him in another post. I never said nothing about and I still ain't said nothing about what's really going on. I don't want no beef with you industry people, just move on with your life. I'm done talking, you got it, your character gonna speak for itself. 
Now, Caribou is correct here in saying that she never publicly talked about the situation online prior to Yadi bringing it up, going on to damage her reputation as an artist. However, the truth is, her numerous subtweets combined with allegedly spreading lies and accusations about him behind his back, as well as generally treating people poorly, all led to Lil Yachty expressing some clearly pent-up anger on IG Live. But as messy as their fallout's been, some fans have theorized that the two's relationship was possibly a little more personal. Referencing back to January of 2023, when Yachty and Caribou made headlines after saying this. Huh? And that's y'all president, that's who y'all look up to. Y'all talking about one night this, one night that. The f he can't even last one round. Like. At first, fans were confused by what exactly Caribou had meant when saying Lil Yachty can't last one round. Stop with this lame sh she was talking about fighting. Lil Yachty attempted to clarify. Stop being weird. Rounds like fighting. If I didn't think that, I would probably think rounds like guns going off. Both of them claim they were talking about fighting, which honestly still isn't a great look for Yachty. But while there has definitely been more that's gone down behind the scenes we don't know about, helping lead to their split, Lil Yachty's August 22nd rant, though, did not end at just Caribou, as he then continued to call out his former friend Mitch in regards to their viral podcast controversy. Now to this Mitch situation, because Mitch got me f***ed up. Y'all online talking about some Lil Yachty bully, uh, disrespecting his friend in front of Key Glock. Bro, I didn't even want to do a podcast, bro. I swear to God, I didn't want to do no podcast, bro. Mitch came to me like, bro, I need to do something in life. I need to do something in life. Help me out. I said, all right, you know what? I'm going to give you a platform. We're going to make a podcast, and I'm going I'm to show people how funny you are, I'm gonna show people how crazy you are. I'm gonna show people like how cool you are. I did the podcast for Mitch. Don't put goddamn three, 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 four hundred thousand dollars in Mitch's pocket. And y'all sitting here talking about some. He disrespecting his friend. And I got, I'm, I, I ain't fucking with Mitch, bro. I talk, I, I been asleep all day. I wake up to this crazy shit. Mitch, how do I say, Mitch, how the fuck you didn't go on the internet and tell these folks that we playing, bro? That tweet got goddamn six million views on it why the fuck you ain't going there telling folks we playing fuck you nigga fuck you and the podcast nigga. how about that i don't give a fuck about the podcast nigga. Fuck the podcast i don't get nothing from none of this shit. i help people bro all i do is try and help people bro please don't let that clip misguide you it doesn't represent me and yadi's friendship at all mitch tweeted that night we joke around pretty harsh sometimes too much for real but in real life it's nothing but respect and love i can't even get on here and act like it's not I ain't nobody, lil bro. Never been. Check my history. I had stats before I met bro. Got even more now. I hope none of this hinders that. It remains to be seen if this will hinder the Safe Place podcast going forward with their production. However, I think it's very safe to say that Lil Yachty and Caribou are done forever. I'll just have some things to say, but mm. help me. Help me. Help me. I'm being silenced. It's two stories the truth and cat. I'm not gonna do it. My best friend's on here saying don't do it. I was just joking, y'all, bye. Caribou claims that she is being silenced about the situation. But does all of this really trace back to that one employee at Red Lobster? I told her me and the whole world wanted to know why she left, and she proceeded to tell me, so there's that. The worker attempts to justify. Honestly though, seeing how mad Yachty was on Instagram, I feel like this was bound to happen eventually, as he was clearly tired of Caribou and her behavior. Hey, is this Caribou? Asked Young Rich Moolah, a booking agent, four days later on August 28th. I am the owner of many platforms, and you were brought up to me from old friends that I should document you and put you on for a show. And word gone, Caribou texts back. The f weird ass dude, nobody effing with you, f off my phone. So far, Caribou is showing no signs of any attitude adjustments. I've been working on a lot of music by myself, no writer academics, which are big bored ass. You're getting on my nerves because all you do is yap all day and it's never like, it's never true. 
So what is the point of that? I don't need a writer. I never did, and I never wanted to use one. It's just very frustrating, and it's getting worse after Bolt got on live and did all that cap and all that extra sh and internet th theatrics. Y'all really don't know anything, and you're going to feel stupid later. <laughs> it don't matter. Y'all Y'all got your mind made up about me either way, but sh be cap. Literally, sh be cap, bruh. Y'all got it, though. Y'all got it, though. Now at 27 years old, Caribou's career is entirely in her own hands. And despite a fake meme circulating that she is now an Uber Eats driver, the truth is Caribou will need to make some significant changes if she hopes to revive her music career. However, considering that she never wanted to be a rapper in the first place, that alone is a question itself.